What's up, everybody? Alright, we're in coding frames. Should be live soon enough. What's up, JG, Zombie Jill, uh, Mr. DNA, Drew? Good to see everybody. What's up, Hydro? Thank you for your sub, sir. Draco, nice to see ya. Move this a little bit so I can actually see. Hope everyone is having a wonderful day. What's up, loose minded zero a um light project? So I'm gonna be doing a shorter section today on knife skills. We're gonna talk about how to hold your knife, how to steal your knife, um, different shapes you can cut stuff into, textures um, that you can create inside of dishes. Um, and then next week we're going to be doing beef stew, which seems like a very simple thing, but it will be, um, we're going to talk about how to layer flavors um, in making a stew. Um, and then we'll touch back on what we did this week on how to make textures um, in the actual thing. I figured winter time beef stew would be a really good thing to do. What's up, Rocco? Well, stew takes about about two hours, I want to say. So um, next week we'll be ready for that. What's up, Chibi? How you doing? Um, and then tonight we're gonna play um, mutant blobs from space, or wait, tails from space, mutant blobs attack. Uh, we're gonna play that. What's up, Finrith? How we doing? Anyways, let's get started. Once again, going to be a shorter section, probably one of the shorter ones I do. I was going to cook some stuff too today, but I just wanted to keep it nice and simple and talk about, well, the basics of knife skills, because that's important. The best thing you can practice on for knife skills is potatoes, because they're cheap. I mean, you can make mashed potatoes or whatever else you want out of them, but um, this is the best thing to practice with, and we'll talk about how to practice with those in a little bit. Okay. How to hold your knife. The biggest mistake new cooks make is they grab the knife like this. And that gives you very little control over how you use the knife. Uh, the correct way to put, hold your knife is you put your thumb, your thumb on the base, and then your finger on the other side, and you clamp down really hard. You want to be actually be grabbing the blade so your finger comes up into the hilt of the blade. This gives you the most control. Um, you want the knife to be an extension of your hand, so the more control you have over it, the, the more precise you can be. You want to be able to tilt the knife anyway and still have the same downward pressure that you would otherwise. And if you grab the knife, just palming it, when you turn the knife to the side, you have very little control when you go up and down. Once again, you put your thumb on the edge of the blade your finger on the other side and you clamp down. Yes, I know the camera's focusing weird. I can't help that. Then you put your finger up inside the hilt. So you're making a really tight base on the knife. Okay, there's a couple different ways you can cut things. Um, there's the standard up and down. The standard up and down, and then you can drag the tip through. This is the one I like to do. You, the one thing you never want to do with your knife is drag it across the cutting board. If you're going to drag your knife, what you're actually doing is moving the food with it. You never want to actually touch the... You don't want to hear this sound. That's a horrible noise. That is the quickest way to dole out your blade. Let's talk about stealing real quick. So keeping your knife sharp is also very important. And every time you make a cut down like this, you're creating a micro abrasion on the edge of your knife. Um, those microabrasions add up really quick and equal a dull knife. So how you get rid of those microabrasions is by stealing your knife. Um, you want a 20 degree angle and most steels, I'll bring it over here, most steels have an edge on them and what you do is you put it on the edge of there and then you tilt down and that is the perfect angle that you want to steal your blade at. That's it right there. So that's the angle you're shooting for and then you just drag down from base to tip If you're new at it, put it on a cutting board like this. When you get really practiced, that's when you take it off the cutting board. You don't have to do it really hard against the steel or really fast or anything like that. It just has to be consistent at that angle. If you do that, um, every time you cut something, your knife will stay sharper for a lot longer. Okay, so let's talk about textures real quick. Um, 
I'm gonna break out one of these zucchinis. I think the way most people have zucchini is in little rings like this. This is how, this is how most home cooks cut it. You got these little rings. And there's nothing wrong with rings. The thing I don't like about rings and zucchini is when they're more than a spoonful and the center part gets really mushy when you cook it because the outside's a lot harder than the inside and then it gets mushy. And then of course you have half moons. See that a lot too. There's a lot more you can do with zucchini. I like it really thin myself. It's a nasty little chunk. So the more the more shapes that you put into what you cook, the the better off it's going to taste. Not maybe not actually like palate taste, but when you put something in your mouth to eat it, the more that's going on in there as far as textures go, the more pleasant the eating experience is. So some of my favorite ways to cut zucchini are like this. Cut it into quarters and then remove the seed. Take a little cut, put your hand on the other side so you don't cut yourself, and then drag the knife through. You can do a lot of stuff with the seeds. Um, I like to put them in rice when you cook the rice, it doesn't really affect the rice at all and uh, adds a little texture. Pretty much when you're cutting anything into exact shapes, you're trying to get a uniform shape out of whatever you're doing. So we want to get four likewise strips. Alright, so we got four strips. Now from here, we can do a lot of stuff with this little strip. We can cut it into smaller strips, and then into matchsticks. I like matchsticks a lot, I think those provide a good texture. Although they are very hard to eat with a fork, so be warned there. Okay, when you cut down with the knife, like I said, you can drag the knife through, but you want to start from the tip of your blade and then go down to where you're cutting. So you put the tip where you want it, push the tip in, and then press down. That way you get a smooth, even cut every single time. And since you have complete control over your knife, you'll get a nice, even cut. And then from here we can do little cubes. And the last way that I really like to cut zucchini, I think it sautés up really good like this, is on the bias. We did this in a previous show. And all you do to cut stuff on the bias is tilt your knife to the side and make the same cut you would. I end up standing kind of sideways to what I'm doing. That way I'm still, my shoulders are straight on the angle I want to cut. If you're standing this way and trying to cut this way, you're going to have a lot, really hard time getting leverage. So if you're going to cut something on a bias, just tilt your body to the side so your shoulders are facing the exact direction you want to cut. And this is probably my favorite way to cut zucchini. Uh, you ha barely have to cook it and it tastes really good. And then likewise, if you wanted bigger cubes, you just make less cuts. The thing you have to be aware of when you're cutting things into cubes is how how tall is it? Because if you cut it into a bunch of really tiny strips, it's not actually going to turn into cubes, it's going to turn into little little squares. Okay, so there's an example of what you can do with zucchini. We have circles, half circles, sticks, small cubes, big cubes, and I don't even know what I'd call this. I would call it bias cut. I'm going to use all this stuff to probably make a soup today. I did not want to cook anything because I wanted to focus on um, focus on the knife skills. And then if I was going to like put this into rice, I would just chop it up pretty fine and uh, use it as so. The thing with the seeds of the zucchini is it gets really soggy really quick. Uh, the actual the actual flesh of it is what um, stays firm and cooks. Um, even if you hate vegetables, I highly recommend that you taste them because the way that you develop your palate and become a better cook, you have to taste things through all processes. So to know what something should taste like cooked, you should probably know what it tastes like raw. Obviously some exceptions like raw potatoes taste horrible um, and things of that nature. But you should know 
would everything taste like raw, and that way you know how to season it properly. And then I'll use all this for a soup or something at a later date. But the great thing about cutting it into all these shapes is uh, it's going to taste really good when you get it on a spoon because you get all sorts of different textures and flavors. Um, I'm a big fan of like super simple soups. I don't even know if you want to call it a soup, but I like vegetables in, in broth with a little bit of garlic and garlic and herbs. And that's all you, that's all you really need to, uh, to have a good, good tasting broth. And honestly, if you're very new to cooking and you haven't cooked very much yourself, I really recommend you start you start simple because the simpler you go, um, the more you develop your your sense of taste. Because uh, if you if you don't cook for yourself that often, you're more used to eating uh, you're more used to eating I don't know salty, fatty foods probably, especially if you eat any fast food. So you really have to retrain uh, retrain your body the way that it it processes food and the way that you taste it. Okay, um, these aren't very big carrots, but that's okay. There's there's a decent sized one. All right, I'll bust out a little trick here because this is one I like to do. Carrots, they're very orange. They have a lot of carotene in them. And what's up, what's up, cat? Get out here, cat. They will end up staining your cutting boards, especially over long term use. So this is a little trick I picked up working in a kitchen. This also works really good for peeling potatoes. Um, it's not a big deal when I'm doing three carrots, so I'll just demonstrate this so you guys can see. Just get a piece of saran wrap, tuck it underneath your cutting board. I like to do this a lot if I'm peeling a lot of potatoes. You just cover the entire thing in about, I don't know, three pieces of saran wrap. And it makes cleanup really, really easy and never messes up your cutting board. Bad kitty. All right, peeling. There's a couple of different ways to peel stuff. Uh, this is the standard. Just drag all the way down, and then there's the down and up. I like the down and up because it goes a lot faster. But you have to have a double-sided peeler to do so. I don't think anybody likes carrot skins. Well, maybe somebody does. Another good tip is if you, you're peeling a lot of stuff, um, a good thing to do is to have a bucket of water next to you, especially potatoes, because the starch on the potatoes will end up jamming the uh, jamming the blade. So if you just swish it off in water real quick, you'll have a lot easier time peeling. I will also warn you, be warned, uh, peelers are sharp. You can cut yourself with a peeler. I've done it before. I've seen actually some really nasty uh, peeling injury before. It's always the stuff you don't think is going to hurt you that will end up hurting you. So, for example, if I just peeled, let's say, 10 pounds of carrots for a stew or something, uh, if you have your whole cutting board covered in saran wrap, all you have to do is this. And you're done. Uh, the, the carrot peelings, as long as they're clean, are very good to go into vegetable stock. They're a good source of flavor. Um, so there's definitely stuff you can do with your scraps if you want to make your own vegetable broth or uh, whatever you want. You like carrot skins? Well, good on you. Good on you. Okay. Let's talk about actually cutting a carrot. There's basically two pieces of the carrot. Like this one's pretty even all around. That's pretty rare. Uh, most carrots, when they start really fat up at the top, get really skinny down at the bottom. So you usually break them into two pieces. You put all your fat ends on one side and your skinny ends on the other side. So it's impossible to get an even cut all the way through. Of course, this one's the exception to the rule. But if you're going to cut something and you want to be very precise with it, you never want it to be too big because then you don't have control over the knife, especially if it's a round object like a carrot. If it's a round object like a carrot, take a look at the size of your knife, 
It's exactly the size of my knife. So there's there's literally no way I could get an even cut by pressing in and then going all the way down. It'd be very hard to do. So we're still going to cut this in half. Okay, so once again, we usually see carrots cut like this. Got your little circles. There's nothing wrong with circles. And you also have cut on a bias like we did with the zucchini. People like to do that a lot. But what I want to talk about is the roll cut. This is a cool little cut that will add more texture to your dish. You make a bias cut like this, then you roll the carrot 180 degrees and make another one. And what you end up with is little triangles. You just roll it back and forth. I think these are a great little way to add texture and you end up with this cool little cool little triangle. Kind of triangle, I guess. That's how I like to cut my carrots. Especially for stews and stuff, that's a nice size. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is how to get really fancy. Um, this works with carrots and zucchini, especially potatoes. Um, this may seem very wasteful because it kind of is. Yeah, the roll cut's uh, not something you see that you see it in restaurants a lot, but not something the the home cook usually knows. Okay. If you want to get really fancy with stuff, you have to make it into a square. Uh, regardless of if you're making little cubes, big cubes, sticks, um, strips, it has to be a square before you can do anything. So what you do is uh, you try to find a flat spot to lay it down on. Make the claw. This is the number one thing for not cutting yourself, is making a claw with your hand and your knife rests on your knuckles. And this way when you push down, when you roll down, you always have that constant presence of your knuckle there. The only way you cut yourself is if you put your thumb underneath where you're cutting or you um, or you stick your pinky out, which I've done both. It's not hard. Anyways, you push down really good. Once again, you put the knife tip right there. And you trim off the edges. Uh, it's a lot easier with bigger carrots because they have more surface area to work with. Oh, not quite. Okay, then we have a square, a square carrot. We'll just chop these real quick, so we're just going to use them for soup. And this is all stuff if you're working in a restaurant we get thrown into like vegetable broth and and whatnot. Okay, so when we have our little square, we got to figure out what can we do with this thing. Uh, if we want it to be actual squares, we have to figure out how far do we cut in to make it so when we cut it on this side that it actually turns into a square. So looking at this, we're going to make a cut right about right about there. So we'll get three strips out of this, and we'll do what we can with it. Just want it to be even through. And this is something that takes a lot of practice to be good at. Honestly, I'm pretty rusty, so my cubes may not be perfect, and that's perfectly fine. So then we end up with three strips here. Um, you can stack them on top of each other and cut them all at once, or you can do them one at a time. If you are new to cutting, cutting things, I suggest you do them one at a time. So we cut that into three, and now we're going to cut this into three. And once again, we're going to make our claw. Not only does this stop you from cutting yourself, it allows you to really secure what you're doing. You hold it with your, your pinky and your thumb on one side, and then you press down on the top, and this way it never slips anywhere. And there we go, we have little tiny cubes of carrot. They're nice and pretty, and this is a really good texture when it hits your mouth. Uh, this is a great thing to put in soup. So that's how you cut things into tiny cubes. Um, bigger cubes are a little bit easier. If you have a big carrot, you have to make less cuts. You just cut them into bigger strips and then do it accordingly. Getting the proportion right is the hard part 
um, being able to eyeball a square and say, okay, I'm going to cut it in half and then half again and then cube it, um, that's, that's the hard part. Okay, the next thing we'll do is match sticks. That's one less step. So we'll just cut it into three. And then in half again. The perfect Julien is one inch long. That's pretty pretty close. It's not my best, but that's about what you want. And of course, carrots start curving and doing all sorts of crazy stuff after you cut them. Um, carrots are very good to hold in water if you want to wait a couple days to use them. Um, it's probably the easiest way to do it. So we're just going to roll cut these. And if you think your roll cut's too big, it's an extra step, but if you cut it directly in half, you get the exact same shape, or pretty close to. I'll just talk about yellow squash real quick. It's not, um, it's a lot harder to cut than zucchini. So if you compare the shape, we're talking about finesse cuts here. It's actually, it's easy to cut. But if you look at the shape, it's, it's way, it's way thicker on the bottom than the zucchini is, where zucchini tends to stay in a, uh, in a decent, straight, um, conformed shape. Squash is not, uh, yellow squash usually tends to have more seeds as well. Let's cut one open and find out. Yeah, you can see the seeds on the inside are much thicker than they were on the zucchini. So if you're going to cut something that's non-uniform, if you want to make it really fancy, you have to make it uniform, which means turning it into strips or squares or uh, trimming off the ends. I'm not going to do that here because we're just going to be making soup out of it. And then after this, we'll talk about potatoes real quick and how you practice with potatoes. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the zucchini. Oh, balls. There we go. Um, I like the inside of the zucchini a lot more than I do yellow squash. That's just my personal opinion. I once again recommend you taste everything, including the inside of the squash. have a comparison to uh, what you're cooking. Always taste everything you cook, even if it tastes bad. If you know it's going to taste bad, you should still taste it so that you have um, you have an appreciation for it. Like, I actually recommend that you eat a piece of raw potato once so you can appreciate what it goes from raw to cooked. And uh, next week we're going to make a stew, and we'll be talking about textures again, but I wanted to lay down the base for that um, on how to cut stuff so we can have a really nice stew tomorrow. And we'll talk about depth of flavor um, in comparison to texture next week. Stew is a very simple thing, but uh, as with all things simple, the simpler it is, the better you have to execute it to uh, have it be successful. And stew is one of those things I love to cook. So when you're cutting stuff fast, you basically take your you take your claw and then you're just inching it back like this across the across the zucchini. Um, just inch it back little by little, and that's how you receive the even cuts. Is because your finger is actually telling the knife where to go down. You're not uh, eyeballing the knife. You just always keep it pressed against your knuckle and you move it back little by little. Okay, potatoes, the cheapest way to um, check your knife skills. Potatoes are dirty, uh, they oxidize, they do all sorts of stuff you don't want them to do. But they are cheap and a very effective way to practice your knife skills. Okay, the first thing you're going to need if you're going to cut potatoes is one, you need a clean cutting board, and two, you need uh, like a damp rag or paper towel or something, because the starch will start sticking to your knife, and if the starch sticks to your knife, um, you can't cut effectively. 
No, normally you would pe peel potatoes, but um, for practicing purposes, I will suggest that you don't, because this way you can actually see what kind of cuts you're getting, because the skin is your guide. So um, you have big long potatoes like this. Cut off the ends. Then we're going to try to make we're going to try to make a square out of it. So easiest way to do it is find one of the sides, whichever side you think is shorter. Um, we're going to say this side. Now you have a nice base to lay it on. And once again, we stick our point of the knife into the cutting board and then push down. This gives us a straight cut all the way through. Okay, so what the skin allows you to see is, well, kind of where you messed up. See, I didn't go, I didn't go far enough in here for it to be a true cut. Now it's not not that big of a deal when you're just practicing, but uh, if you want to get a perfect cut every time, that allows you to see where you miss. That's why you leave the the skin on when you do this. Now potatoes oxidize. You don't know what oxidation is. That means your stuff turns brown. Like if you leave an avocado out. Uh, it's just going to turn brown and look like poop really quick. So if you keep potatoes for longer than a couple, of, like an hour on the on the counter, you want to make sure that it's in water. Water is the easiest way easiest way to stop it. We're gonna wipe all the starch off our knife. Okay, we're going to do the same thing here, and we'll do a couple cuts. I'm excited for beef stew next week. Beef stew is definitely one of my favorites to cook during the winter time. But beef stew does require a lot of pretty finesse chopping if you want to do it right, so that's why we did this one first. And then we will get into the actual cooking next week. All right. So we have our two somewhat squares. Um, so if we want to do a big dice out of this, once again, got to look how many times we're going to cut it. It's not a perfect square. If I want a big dice, I'm looking at dead down the center here. And then I think this looks about twice as long, so we should be able to get three cuts out of that. So we'll go straight down the middle. The hard part is learning to eyeball it. That's why you use potatoes, which are cheap. And if you put these into a stew or a soup or something, it's not going to hurt you. I almost cut myself there. Holy shit. I don't need any cuts right now. Thank you. So now we have... Now we have big sticks. Even them up. I am so lucky I didn't cut myself. The knife actually went into my skin. I'm not bleeding though. Lucky me. And then you have big cubes of potatoes. And then if we wanted to go much smaller, I'll trim off this real quick. Cut it into much thinner strips. Mess that one up. Remember, this was the most nerve-wracking part of culinary school. Was the um, the practical test for this? Had to be perfect, 
or nothing. And these are by no means perfect. But I went through many 50 pound bags of potatoes practicing, and that's why I can do this now. So I'd recommend that you play around with your food, especially if you're making something silly like a soup. Uh, take a few extra minutes to cut something and make it uh, make it pretty so that you can uh, do it again. Alright guys, well that's going to be my short segment for knife skills today. I don't want to go crazy on it. Uh, that's just the basics of how you cut things. You can really play around with it and do whatever you want with the textures of your food. But um, next week we're going to be talking about layers of flavor and how to build them inside something simple like a stew. So I hope that was I hope that was educational for you guys. Uh, I'm not cooking anything else today. I'm not going to cook the soup. Um, the big the big pieces would be more stew size. Uh, these would be more stew size. The little ones uh, maybe for like a hash or something like that um, for cooking there. So once again, just to, to recap, recap what you want. You have to find a way to hold your knife where if you turn it left or right, you still have the same amount of power pushing down. So you want to have the best grip possible on your knife. Um, and then if you want to cut things really fancy, you have to get them uniform first, whether it be uh, strips or cubes. Um, it always has to be uniform. I'll throw one more thing out there while we're, while we're sitting here. If you have a lot of stuff to cut, do one thing at a time. Always do one thing at a time. Um, so if you're making cubes out of stuff, make sure, uh, make sure you make all of your cubes at once and then make all your strips at once and then cut all your cubes at once if that makes sense. It saves a lot of time. Actually, I'll throw out one more thing here with my messy cutting board. This is something I picked up uh, that was not obvious to me uh, when I started working in a kitchen. I saw somebody do it. I watched somebody that was very, very, very good with their knife uh, do it, and I picked up a lot of tri tips from them. If you have a lot of stuff to cut, always pile it on your non-dominant side. So if you're left-handed, all your food should go on the right side. If you're right-handed, all your food can go on the left side. The reason for this being is every time you make a cut, it ends up on this side of your knife. So if you pile up everything you have to cut on your non-dominant side, it's much easier to push over and you can work much faster. Or if you pile it up over here, you're cutting then you have to reach over and push it to the other side. It's the claw, indeed loose-minded. But always keep your knife clean and happy and steal it. That's the most important thing for having a sharp knife. Uh, steal it in between tasks, especially if you do something like tomatoes or something where you're chopping a lot, like chopping herbs, and uh, always steal it before you're done and put it away. And you'll have a happy, healthy knife. Can't believe I almost cut myself. Like I've, that's that's millimeters from me bleeding, and I just I just touched my blade. It's very sharp right now. Alright, well I'm just going to put this in the fridge because I will be cooking something later. So a ton of clarified butter from the, the egg thing. Okay. wires all over the place this time. Make ratatouille? Uh, I could. Clearly the, the Bob or Oscar thing, oh the knives are so happy. Look at that happy little knife. <laughs> nice beekeepers. Well I, I once again I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys picked up something from that. That's not going super in depth. I'm not doing anything super crazy like a fine brunoise or chiffonade or anything like that. That's just the basics. I think um, that's probably what threw me the most when I got into culinary school was how to properly use a knife. Um, that's really the scariest part of cooking in general is uh, you got that big that big sharp thing that you don't really know how quite how to use. So 
Uh, practice makes perfect. Potatoes are really cheap to practice on. Um, play with your food. Cut it in ways that you normally wouldn't. And see how it turns out. Uh, knife skills definitely set you apart from other people in the kitchen. Um, hi, Bane. If you are quick and effective with a knife, um, you'll have a hard time getting fired. That's definitely a skill that people look up to um, in kitchens. I've always been one of the best with a knife in the kitchens I've worked in. Um, I've certainly worked with people that were better than me. And it's definitely a, uh, definitely a respect status thing. Everybody knows, everybody knows in the kitchen who's the best person with their knife skills. Everybody knows that. Um, it's definitely a skill that is respected in kitchens. Okay, guys, I'm going to go offline. We're going to load back up downstairs. be playing um, Tales from Space, Mutant Blobs Attack tonight. Um, I'm going to take a few minutes just to clean up here real quick. Uh, but I'm going to go offline and then go back online right away. Um, I'll have the beef stew recipe posted next next week on the YouTube video when I upload it tonight. So we're going to release the Kraken. Thank you everybody for your patience. I do appreciate it. Yeah, it was a very short one today. You know, very short one today. Uh, next week will be a longer one. Probably two, two and a half hours or so. So um, we're just doing a light one. We just did knife skills on textures and shapes and stuff like that. So I will be, I will be downstairs in just a moment. Thank you all for your patience. And we'll be right back. <laughs> 